My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. On Mad Money tonight, digging deeper into the chaos include, can the smaller domestic players survive? I'm sizing up the industry with the CEO of Magnum Hunter. the hideous decline in oil last week, taking the price of crude down to 69 bucks a barrel, even if today's rebound, exactly how worried should we be about the energy complex? To figure out the answer to that crucial question, we need to check in with some of the more junior oil and gas producers whose stocks have been eviscerated by the outright collapse of crude. I'm talking about companies like Magnum Hunter, MHR, the speculative $746 million exploration production company that has high quality assets in the Marcellus, Utica, and Bakken shales, and rapid production growth, but also a debt-laden balance sheet, make it one of the more highly leading companies in the industry, as well as a capital expenditure budget that some say exceeds its cash flow. Now, Magnum Hunters had a number of plans to clean up that balance sheet, including selling some of their Bakken anchorage and spinning off the Eureka Hunter pipeline assets as a mass limited partnership early next year. But the recent decline in oil price is considered to be a real blow, even as 60% of the company's production comes from natural gas, and that's going higher, which is, <laughs> doesn't matter. Stock lost 26% of its value anyway, year-to-date down 50%. So with the stock currently trading at $3.91, how low can Magnum Hunter go, given the decline in crude? Has it already been punished enough, or could there be more pain ahead? Let's take a closer look with Gary Evans, the chairman and CEO of Magnum Hunter. Hear more about how his company's doing and where it's headed. Gary, welcome back to Mad Money. Good, Good to see you, you. sir. Thanks, right, Gary, I always figured that what would happen is a company that got shrewd and decided to get out of oil at the top and go into natural gas, which has been very sticky and not going down, would be rewarded with a higher stock price. But it doesn't matter, does it? Uh, the, the bloodbath is for everybody. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter whether you're an oil company or a gas company. We're all being treated the same. Okay, so tell us what, when people say, look at all that debt. They, they, they don't have the cash flow to cover their drilling program. What's the solution for Magnum Hunter? Well, the, the thing that's really uh, changing for us is, you know, we've sold 700 million of our oil properties in the last year and a half. We made a decision to focus totally on the Marcellus and Utica. Why? We have the best rock. We're in the heart of the play. And that's the key to the success of all these junior oil and gas companies is, are you in the heart or on your fringe of the play? Right. Because when you have a low commodity price environment like we're dealing with today, you've got to have low finding cost. You've got to drop your cost. You've got to be able to find reserve cheaper than anybody else. You're not going to do that without good rock. So that's key number one. So our decision is that we felt like gas long term was going to be the place to be. Um, I haven't been bullish on oil for almost right. two years. I know. Um, I felt like uh, oil prices were unsustainably no, I high. I said, what are you doing selling Bakken? <laughs> well, um, today, those Bakken properties that we sold, the 700 million that we've gotten over the last year and a half are probably worth 200 million to the buyers. So uh, we were fortunate. Um, uh, we're very well hedged. And so you, you talk about liquidity. We, we, we decided to make a decision to put in a term loan. We did that about a month ago. This locked in for four years. So we have no borrowing base reduction that's going to occur with our line of credit like most oil and gas and, and companies. And you hedge, meaning that you sold uh, a f forward natural gas or also for the oil that you have left? Well, all our oil is hedged 100%. Till the, no, only till the end of the year. Right. But we only have a couple thousand barrels a day. So right. we're, we're a gas company. You said 60%. Right. We'll be 90% by the end of December. And tell people, I mean, if you can say, sell it at four bucks, it, your finding costs are very low given how the high quality. The, you're talking about finding costs of 50 cents an MCF in the Marcellus Utica. We can make money down to two, two and a quarter. Wow. Okay, so that makes me feel that what people should be doing is at least considering it's so liquid, I'm going to caution you, but you've got a uh, monthly cash dividend on a Series C preferred, and a Series D preferred, and Series E preferred. These things are yielding 10, 11 percent. That also might be an option for, for people. To Absolutely. Think That's, if, you wanna, if, you, if you're comfortable with just having a dividend, you can buy one of our preferreds. And you have no, you're not worried about coverage of these pieces of paper? No. We have $140 million of liquidity as we're sitting here today. We can cut our CapEx budget next year to $100 million if we want and still have some of the most explosive growth in the industry because we have the slug of wells coming on right. over this month. Well, then where is oil going? You got a clear head. You knew to sell. <laughs> well, the problem is we're not in control. That's the problem. And, you know, I think the situation over with OPEC has a lot more to do with Russia, has a lot more to do with Iran than it does trying to destroy the U.S. oil industry. So I've lived through four or five of these cycles. I've been in this business some over, over 30 years now. And 
it always lasts a little bit longer than we think. So we're counting on a year, year and a half of lower prices. Now, uh, do you think that we are, uh, you are at the mercy, say, of, the, of Samson and the sale and also of the drop down uh, of the IPO? Is that okay? Well, the, the Samson, which is the remaining Bakken assets, right. I'm not counting on those selling. I mean, I'm assuming we'll just keep those assets okay. and hold them. The MLP, which is the Eureka Hunter Pipeline, we're on schedule to take that public early next year. We got bankers hired, we got lawyers hired, we got accountants hired, well, so we're ready to go. Well, this tells me that people are overreacting. Well, the market value of Magnum Hunter today is equal to my equity value in my pipeline alone. Forget all my other assets. Well, okay, let's leave it at that because I think that's the best way to put it. That's Gary Evans, the chairman and CEO of Magnum Hunter Resources, who has never ducked a tough question about his company or the industry. Mad Money's back in the break.